I call, there is something else. <laughs> Tires is what wins a race. What's going on, everyone? Thanks for tuning in for another episode of JB Trickle RC. Uh, this particular episode bringing you another tutorial. This will be a continuation of my tutorial series. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I've done a video, uh, I've done a build of the new 21.5 car. Um, some maintenance, some diff building, some shock building, some CVD rebuilding, things of that nature. I've also got a basic testing and tuning pan car guide, and I have a basic setup and tuning dirt oval guide up as well on the channel. And I'll put those into the, uh, those links in the description of this video as well to help you find that if you've not seen those yet. And this is a continuation, but this is also something fresh and a first time for the channel. And like a uh, good old Harry just said, um, you know, tires win races. And Harry's right. I mean, there's a lot of variables in RC racing that wins races, but tires is one of them. It doesn't matter if you're running rubber tires. It doesn't matter if you're running foam tires. Tires will help win a race. Your tire program is just as important as everything else you're doing in your RC racing. Um, even other events that's not racing related, tires play a big role into that. So this particular video, we're not really gonna touch on the rubber tires so much, although um, I may mention in the video uh, an area or two where you can do this and use this to benefit your rubber tire program as well. Um, specifically pan car, not, not really your street stocks. But, um, but what we're gonna be talking about today is foam tires. 21.5 car, 17.5 Pro, Sprint cars. A lot of your dirt oval programs, even your pan cars on the carpet. Um, some of the information you're gonna get um, on this video can translate some over to your pan car carpet chassis that run foam tires. But they don't run them like this. We are specifically talking dirt oval in this episode. I've got a rear foam tire here. I've got a front foam tire here. And I don't know if you can see in the camera too good. You'll see later in the episode. These are grooved, both of them are grooved, and the rears are also cross-cut. So the topic of this video is gonna be actually tire truing. So you may ask yourself if you're new, what is tire truing? Tire truing is basically whenever we take a mini lathe, we put the tire on, turn the lathe on, the tire's gonna spin, you're gonna come across and you're gonna cut your diameter. So it's gonna go back and forth both ways. You're gonna cut your overall diameter that you want for the tire. Then after that, you're gonna be grooving the tire. For dirt oval, you do groove the tires. Um, I don't think they do that for the pan cars. I think they just cut to their specified diameter. But then on the same lathe, you're gonna groove both the rear and the front tires. And then you're done with the front tire. And on the rear, you're gonna to have to add your cross cuts to help promote additional traction. So that's what this video is about. It's a tutorial of tire truing for dirt oval. Again, guys, if you are new and getting into carpet oval racing, this video can still help you. Um, the, the tire truer I've got, I've got Arbor set up for the dirt oval cars. I got Arbor set up for pan cars. I can cut the foam tires for carpet pan cars. I can cut down the rubber tires for the paved oval um, uh, cars. I can cut touring car wheels. I mean, my, my truer, I got Arbors to do it all. So, um, although I'm mainly using it for dirt oval purposes, I don't race carpet paved oval cars. Um, I'm not saying that I won't, I will. There's a track I plan on uh, visiting here in the near future and probably go out there and race, but I'll probably still be on rubber tires for that race. Going to cover an episode, show you guys something new and another side of RC we've yet to explore in this channel. But that's more information we'll get to at a later date. Again, this video is all about tire truing. So uh, I hope you find this video helpful. Some of you new guys that's just getting started. Maybe there's some guys out there that's been doing this for a while and they've just been buying their tires cut or having a buddy doing it. Hopefully this video will help some of you out there, you know, get involved and, and, and start cutting some of your own tires. But if not, that's fine. You can still race these classes. This is not a necessary tool. Um, it's a benef very beneficial tool, but it's not a necessary tool. I, I know several racers that don't have one, they have their buddies cut their tires. In fact, I've been cutting some tires for some of my friends. Um, I've actually, you know, uh, there's a uh, Chris um, from Blue Groove. You can look him up on Facebook. Um, you can order tires pre-cut to your specs there. And uh, whenever I say to your specs, we'll get into that more in the video as well because there's more than one way to cut and groove a tire. There's your number of uh, grooves, number of cross cuts, all that can vary. And uh, we'll touch on that some in the video. 
But again, guys, hope you enjoy the video, and uh, let's just go ahead and jump right into it. All right, so let's go over some of the tools that's going to be necessary whenever you're uh, truing or cutting your tires. Um, obviously, we've got our uh, tire truer over there. I've got the CRC automatic tire truer. doesn't matter if you've got a Huddy or CRC or any other manufacturer. You want to make sure that your arbors there are on straight and zeroed out. Already got a cutting bit on. It's ready to go. Um, also had a Sharpie there um, that we're going to use for marking our cross cuts. Got my power supply there. Um, this right here is our actual tire cutter, tire groover. And you can get those in, uh, you know, different number of teeth so you can groove the tires. I'm using six. It's pretty standard for our area and what we do for this particular class. Got our sanding paddle for beveling and rounding the tire edges. Um, again, got our Sharpie there. Uh, got a tire jig. Uh, that's to put in your cut tires to mark your cross cuts for. And um, uh, these are available online. Uh, you could look up uh, TP3D, which is Tyler Price 3D. Um, he 3D prints those. That's actually one I designed and made myself. Um, got some tires there ready to go. And uh, that is what a tire looks like before you do anything to it. It's smooth. Uh, there's no grooves, no cuts. It's uh, larger in diameter than it needs to be. And this is compared to a tire that has been cut. Uh, that's a rear tire. It's already got your grooves. It's got some side bite cuts as well as your normal cross cuts. So uh, that way you can kind of see some uh, close-up differences of the tires there. So um, a big difference. So we're going to take you through the entire process with this video. So you see everything that we got, um, you know, everything that's going to be necessary and things of that nature. Uh, I'm going to be talking about there too, the Dremel tool. Um, I use a Dremel tool with a very small cutting disc to make those cross cuts. Um, if you're going to use a Dremel tool, which you can, uh, it takes a little bit of a learning curve to use one properly because uh, you don't want to cut in too deep. There's a couple methods to keep you from doing that. We'll go over that later in the video. But we're ready to pretty much rock and roll. So what we're going to do here is go ahead and get prepped and ready to go with the first tire. I got my tire arbor bit there. Uh, got my, one of our brand new fresh tires that has not been cut yet. Right, so let's get this first tire on and get this process going, shall we? So we're going to go ahead and get the first tire on. This one is a rear tire. It's the first one we're going to go ahead and do. Uh, getting it positioned on the arbor. We're going to run that other end down. Um, you do want to tighten it, but you don't have to, you know, put your back into it. You know, just run it down until it stops and put like another half a turn in it. Um, you just want to make sure it's not going to back off or anything like that. Uh, just kind of spinning the tire around there, giving a, a one last uh, once over, make sure she's rolling straight. I've already zeroed it out, or sh should I say made sure it was zeroed out, which it was. Um, and then what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to close that shield. Do not forget to do that or you're going to have tire dust all in your face. But uh, we're going to power that thing on and we're going to go ahead and hit that button and make that truer start cutting across. Now this is an automatic truer. If I was to not touch a button again, it would run all the way across to the end and return home on its own. But what I like to do to help speed up the process is once I see it clear the tire, I tell it to stop. Then I hit it and bring it back the other direction, telling it to return home manually. This just speeds up the process a little bit, and trust me, that may sound like not a lot of time, and you're right, but if you're cutting a lot of tires, it adds up and helps. So that thing's going to return home, and then we're going to go ahead and lift it. I've cleared the tire. Even though it's still spinning, I can lift the uh, safety lid there now, or the shield. And uh, before we go any further, you know, I'm going to want to go ahead and check the diameter of that tire. So we're going to go ahead and remove it. Um, always measure your tires. After I mean, I've got the cutting bit locked down, but I always want to make sure um, that the tires are coming off the right diameter. So I'm going to pull out my calipers here, and I'm cutting these tires at 270. There are multiple diameters you can cut it at. A rule of thumb um, that I've heard a lot of people say is generally like a 2.65 inch to like a 2.6 seven two inch tire is like you know relatively the norm for starting people do go a little larger people do go smaller it's up to you it's up to your track up to the rollout you know there's several variations um, of what you want to consider to do there so if you're new and don't know what to do talk to some of your local guys you know get a good zero point to start with and experiment with so now what I'm going to do, we got the tire back on. We verify the diameters where we want it, which in this particular case is 270. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and check the direction 
of the motor of the truer. Now this is important because what we're getting ready to do now is we're going to bevel the edges. But if you don't pay attention to the direction the tire is moving, because this thing can go in both directions, you could snatch that tool and rip it right out of your hand and throw it at you or across the room or whatever. You don't want to do that. Pay attention to the direction of it and then safely put your tool according to the direction. I like to round and bevel the edge of my tires from the top side like you see here. I'm going to roll it out and back. Because if you just held it there at an angle, you're just going to add a chamfer to the tire. You don't want to do that. You want to round it, put a little bevel, a little round, a little radius to the edge of the tire. And I like to do it from the top end, so I'm making sure that the tire rotation will allow for that. Um, and then again, whenever I actually groove the tire, as you'll see here shortly, I use the actual lathe base um, as a uh, support. So I make sure the tire is rotating in a direction that would allow me to do that. And uh, we're going to go over that here now, too. So I'm going to grab my uh, tire grooving bit. We've got six grooves there, or six teeth to cut six grooves. And again, you want to mind your direction of the rotation because you don't want to fling a tool out of your hand. So I'm going to have it spinning uh, towards me. And uh, we're going to use that base right there as kind of a guide. It's a good flat surface. It lets me roll that cutting bit in towards the bottom, helps me hold it flush, and it helps me slide it in nice and slow. Um, to the point that you can guide it because these these cutting bits have a little bit of play. Uh, these groovers have a little bit of play left or right. So you kind of got to manually self-center it and then just guide it in. So I'm going to go ahead and rest it on that ledge like I'm talking about. So I'm just going to slowly guide it in, get it centered. And then I'm slowly going to just start sliding the, uh, the grooving tool into the tire. And there we have it. The grooves are cut. And I just want to say, too, you don't have to bury that tool in there either. What I generally do is run it in until it's just about to touch and bottom out on the teeth, but don't bury the tool in the tire. So there you can see we got six clean grooves on that tire. And uh, this is compared to another tire that's ready to go race. So you can see where we're at in the process. We still got to do cross cuts, things of that nature. Um, but uh, we're going to worry about that a little bit later in the video. So, uh, but... Uh, what we're going to do next is we got a front tire ready to go and we're going to do the exact same process guys um, exact same process going to get that on there uh, lock the arbor down and like i said same process the only difference of this one from the rear tire to the front tire is you want to use the correct grooving tool okay so again we're going to go ahead and power the thing on we're going to tell that uh, the cutting bit to go ahead and work so it's going to go across and cut the main direction now And once it stops and gets so far, I'm going to go ahead and tell that thing to return home. I'm going to stop it, tell it to come back home, and she's going to come back again. And this is the cleanup pass again. And you're actually going to get to hear this process with sound shortly. I just wanted to give you a good voiceover tutorial portion of the video, and then I'm going to do the same thing again, but with actual sound of the cutting machine. And again, too, uh, we're going to go ahead and bevel around our edges of the tire. And so you want to mind your direction again. I'm going to keep warning you of that, guys, because that really is a very important step here. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start beveling that. And, and again, you notice I don't just hold the thing down on an angle. I don't want to chamfer. I want a rounded edge on both sides. So I'll just kind of keep that tool moving back and forth a couple times, and it's done. It's, it's good to go. So once we get done with that, we're going to break out the grooving tool again. And again, uh, the grooving tool number of grooves can vary depending on what you are running, what kind of traction you want. Generally, the more grooves you got, the more traction you got, and so on and so forth. Also, on your cutting bit, uh, or your excuse me, your grooving tool, um, this one here has got a front and a rear on the same tool. Some of them don't do that. Some of them are a one-stage groover. You can buy them that way too. The, the, the point of me telling you this is just be mindful and use the right end on the right tire. You know, you don't want to attack the uh, front tire with like a rear tire groover on there. It's just not going to work out. Um, but the uh, but same process before. I'm going to use that ledge, slowly guide that tool in on that front tire, ease it in, get got it self-centered, let it roll in, and now we got another front tire that's grooved. Now, this front tire is done now. Um, you can go across with a fine file and do a pre-break-in on, on the tire, and we may talk about that in a later video. 
Not going to worry about that right now. As far as this video is concerned, that tire is done and ready to be on the track, and you can break it in on the track itself. Now, this next couple areas that we're coming up in the video is going to be the part where I'm actually going to go ahead and turn on the uh, uh, the volume, let you hear the cutty, uh, let you hear the cutter run, and follow that process again with some sound. Find my measurements. We're going to go back and do the cross cuts on this rear tire later. We're going to slide this on. Close the hatch, turn it on, and let the cutter do its job. So now you can hear it engaging the tire. Let it run out. I'm going to stop it and go ahead and bring her back in. Now that that's done, I'm going to open the hatch. Okay. And again, I just want to double check my direction. Because the depending on the direction is going to be where you're going to put the paddle like we talked about earlier. just looking for you know something good and uniform I don't like to leave the straight edges but now here's the thing again we're gonna go ahead and go to the rear I'm gonna move this in so you can see this more okay and now we want to bring the tire back because I like to use this base as my guide like we talked about earlier I'm going to light up the tire. There we go. You can hear it engage. I'm going to ease it in until about at bottom, until nearly wants to bottom out there. And pull her back out. And you should be able to see the grooves from there. And we're going to pull that off. And even though I've got my bit locked down and I've double checked that, I always still like to run my, my tires through my calipers just to make sure which everything's still coming out good. But again, now we've got those good grooves here. And then we're gonna worry about the cross cuts at the end. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and do the same for the front tire again. So we're gonna close that lid, turn it on, tell that cutter to go. Whenever I hear that it's cleared it, I'm going to stop it and bring it back. And you're going to hear it faintly clean it up going the other direction as well. I'm going to go ahead and let it stop. I can open this. Now I'm going to get it spinning the way I want to so I can bevel the edges. So now we got the tire, the front tire on. Now we're gonna get the machine going in the direction we want again. Line it up with the front. Get this so I can see to get it lined up properly. So that looks pretty straight there. And then you can hear it bite. I'm just going to ease that in there like so. 
Just like that. Pull it out. And that's another front tire done. Oh, that one got hung up on the arbor a little bit, but it's good. All right, guys, so now we're at the end of the video, and uh, I can't even remember exactly what my problem was here, but um, something happened. I didn't actually get the video of me cutting, actually cross-cutting the tires, so I'm going to recreate that for you here. So as you can see, I'm putting in my rear tires and my rear tire jig, uh, and you can do this several different ways. You don't have to use a tire jig. Some people go around and, and take like a, one of those like fabric rulers, go around and mark your tire. You know, they figure out to how many cross cuts they need, you know, do a little math, take the measurement of your tire and all that kind of stuff and, and figure it out that way. And uh, that's how I used to do it. But I, I made the tire jig here. Uh, but what I'm going to do here is take my Sharpie marker. I'm going to go across and just draw all those uh, those horizontal marks uh, to make my cross cuts with. And uh, that's what those slots in that jig is for. So you just got that tire kind of held in there with a little bit of friction. And then you go around and make your marks. And then whenever you take your uh, tire out of the jig, you're going to see here, um, you're going to actually see your, uh, your marks on the tire. And again, you're actually going to see the cuts because I've already cut the tire. Um, I messed up this filming process, but we're going to recreate it. We're going to redo it anyway, so it's okay. Uh, but then what I've got here is I've got a Dremel tool, and I don't know if you can notice the difference between the uh, shiny part and the black part. I made a mark on there so I can see that thing while it's spinning, and I can judge how deep I'm cutting. And then what I do is I come across and I start on the inside grooved line just a little bit. If you get that outer edge a little bit, it's fine. But then I'll just walk it across and I'm staying that depth. There's other ways you can do it too. Some people, and I do have another cutter I use occasionally that I've actually got a, I purchased a sized bearing offline that slides on that bit, uh, the shaft of the bit, and it uses it as kind of a depth guide. You can do that route too, because you don't want to go much deeper than what the tire grooving tool actually does. Uh, you want to be relatively the same there. But what I did here, as I've, I've cut several tires now, I kind of got the feel for it. So I actually just took a Sharpie, turned my uh, the end bit on, kind of marked it so I can judge and just watch how deep the, tutting, the cutting bit actually cuts into the tire that way. Uh, good process, it works just as good. Um, but you can also add some side bite cuts. Um, I haven't been doing it so much on my tires. Um, I've got some that has it on. I actually had a buddy cut me some tires before I got another tire truer. This is the second tire truer that I've owned. Um, so, you know, that could be uh, another thing you can do too. And same concept, you know, stay the same depth. Um, be mindful and you want to try to maintain no matter what lines you're cutting whenever you're cross cutting if you're doing side bites or if you're doing cross cuts you want to try to maintain a nice clean straight line you don't want to cut too deep you don't want to exceed much you know much deeper than what you're actually grooving the tire with either uh, either but that is the that's really the process to it guys it, it you know your your first set I mean if you got if you can get some old sets from somebody that's worn down and practice on those first, do that. I mean, it just takes a little bit of practice, but anybody can do it, and it's just like anything else. It just takes some practice. Well, guys, I hope that video was helpful. I hope I was able to help somebody that uh, was wanting to uh, learn how to true their own tires, somebody maybe getting into the hobby. Again, it doesn't have to be dirt oval. A lot of that information will translate for your, your uh, carpet uh, pan cars as well. But... Um, and if you're wondering why I'm not dirty and covered in um, tire chunks right now, that's because um, I filmed the actual cutting portion on another day. I'm filming my intro and outro on another day. Otherwise, there would be black rubber all over me, my arm, my face, everywhere. And um, again, if you're doing this, it's probably a good idea to wear a respirator because uh, uh, whenever you're cutting, especially doing uh, cutting down to diameter, um, or excuse me, whenever you're cutting your grooves, there's a lot more fine dust. Um, so it's probably a good idea to do that just for safety purposes. I do. But anyway, guys, again, I hope I was able to help some of you. Somebody new just starting out, you know, somebody that's been racing for a while just now wanting to get into cutting their own tires. 
But, uh, but again, guys, just don't forget, support your local hobby shops, support your local tracks, get your family out, start having some RC fun. And I appreciate each and every single one of you, and I'll catch you guys next time.